Jonathan Edwards, a great philosopher, a great pastor, a great theologian. The Amer America has ever seen. This is what he said. Life is short. All of us know it very well. And these days, we are more experiencing this truth than the times before, even though we know this truth, that life is short, death is certain, and eternity is lengthy. And therefore, we need to look at issues from eternal perspective. Things of greater importance than uh, the issues that we deal with every day in everyday life. And this morning, this evening, we are going to look at the first most important issue is the issue of the Savior. The real Savior. The genuine Savior. Not a fake one because there are many people who claim to be the saviors of mankind, but they do not stand the test. So we are going to look at the real savior. Nobody knows the exact date of his birth, but that one event divides the whole of history, world history, into the years labeled as BC, meaning before Christ, and AD, meaning Anno Domini. In the Latin, uh, Anno Domini means in the year of the Lord. He never wrote a book, but more books have been written about him than about anyone else in the history. In fact, uh, the nearest thing we have to uh, his biography, the part of the whole Bible called the New Testament, has been translated in whole or in part into more than 1,500 languages. He never painted a picture or composed any poetry or music, but nobody's life and teaching has been the subject of a greater output of songs, plays, poetry, pictures, films, videos, and other art forms. He never raised an army, but millions of people have laid down their lives in this cause. It has been calculated that every year, the almost unbelievable number of 3,30,000 thousand of his followers are martyred for their uh, faith, faith in Jesus Christ. And some uh, calculations go higher than that. Except for one brief period during his childhood, his travels were limited to an area about um, probably a size of a a district in Telangana or in Andhra. But today his influence is literally worldwide. He, his public teaching lasted only three years and was restricted to one small, tiny country. But today, some of the world's largest radio and television networks are given over exclusively to spreading his words. He set foot on only two countries, but one Christian missionary organization claims to fly regularly to more countries now than any commercial airline in the world. Simple, one Christian mystery organization. He had no formal education, but thousands of universities 
seminaries and colleges and schools have been founded in his name. He never owned any property. He had to borrow a boat to sail in, a donkey to ride on, and even a coin to use for an illustration. He didn't have even a coin. But all around the world today, thousands of buildings have been erected for the sole purpose of teaching his followers and adding to their number. In his own lifetime, he was relatively unknown outside of his own small country, but in the current edition of Encyclopedia Britannica, the entry on Jesus runs to nearly 30,000 words. We are talking about Jesus Christ of the Bible. We also say that it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But there are several false ideas about Jesus Christ in the world. There have always been false ideas about Jesus Christ. Even while he was alive, one day he came to the place called the Caesarea Philippi. And he looked at his disciples and asked a very most important question. And the question is, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Simply put, what are people thinking about me? And immediately answers came. And most of them are absolutely wrong answers, are partially right answers. Some said, he was John the Baptist. It was absolutely wrong answer. Some said he was Elijah. Again, wrong. Some said he was Jeremiah the prophet. Again, wrong. But some did not want to be very specific. But they said he is one of the prophets. Yes, Jesus Christ held the office of a prophet. But he was more than a prophet. Even till, even till today, there are many people in the world. Millions of people think that Jesus Christ is only a prophet, a greater one. But he was a prophet nonetheless. A great prophet, no doubt about that. Many people think that Jesus Christ was simply a prophet. And one day Jesus Christ asked the Pharisees, the religious uh, people of his day, what do you think about Christ? Whose son is he? What do you think of Christ and whose son is he? They immediately said he was, he, 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 he was a son of David. He was a son of David. So you can uh, simply say that, uh, you know, in those days, people thought that Jesus Christ was a prophet or a, probably a king. Yes, he was a prophet. He was a king. He was also a priest. Those were his offices, but he was more than that. Many people have similar false ideas about the identity of this real Jesus, the Jesus that Bible talks about. Some people think today that Jesus Christ is uh, the political or uh, a political revolutionary. Some people think that Jesus Christ uh, uh, was a religious uh, guru, religious guru. I think most of the people in the world today think that Jesus Christ was a religious guru, especially in our country. Some thought Jesus Christ was a mystic. And many people, even the Christian people, the so-called church-going boys and girls, believe that Jesus Christ is the faith healer. He came into this world 
just to remove sickness from this world remove sadness from this world remove suffering from this world and offer a good life for people that's what many people think today there is a there is a cultic group called the jehovah's witnesses they think that jesus christ was the first created being in fact they say that he was uh, the archangel michael the archangel and there are uh, hundreds of people i would rather say thousands or more than that round like and even say lakhs of people in both the telugu speaking states i don't know about other places but telugu speaking states they believe that jesus christ is not god but he is a son of god they have the similar idea that uh, jehovah's witnesses have and so we can go on and on and on talking about the wrong views of jesus christ probably you may have your own idea i may have my own idea but who cares you can be sincerely wrong i can be sincerely wrong and that's why we need to look at the word of god the bible thy word is truth the bible says your god your word is truth in john's gospel chapter 17 verse 17 and therefore we are going to look at the word of god but before that i would like to also say that jesus christ was an historical person first of all you can prove it not only from the bible but also from outside of the bible jesus christ was not a myth some kind of a strange idea in your mind but that not but, but not a reality somebody said why do you follow your such and such a religion he said like this he said i do not worship you know he mentioned one name of one particular book but i worship this particular person of my own imagination oh he is not real but you have concocted an Im- an image of somebody and you are creating in your own mind you are creating god there are people like that and therefore we need to look at that historicity of the person of jesus christ of nazareth who is jesus or who was jesus if you want to put it that way he was an historical person now i don't have time for all of that but you know we have clear evidence from the history there are at least the five things that i can point uh, at when it comes to the historicity of jesus christ number 1 there was a person called flavius flavius josephus he was perhaps the most distinguished and learned jew of his day he was the jewish historian he was not sympathetic to jesus christ he never believed in him but he talked about jesus christ in his book called antiquity of antiquities of um, Josephus And then there was uh, another name by the name of Suetonius the official historian of the imperial ha- house Rome he talked about Jesus and there was another one by the name of Cornelius Tacitus the Roman governor of Asia and another distinguished historian of his day he talked about Jesus Christ of the bible jesus christ of nazareth not some kind of uh, jesus christ of some other country but jesus christ who lived in palestine and then there is the fourth name plinius uh, plinius secundus 
he was also called Pliny the Younger, famously called Pliny the Younger. He was the contemporary of both Tacitus and Suetonius and the governor of Bithynia. And he mentioned about Jesus Christ. And number five, Lucian, a second century satirist who ridiculed Christianity, but he talked about Jesus Christ, a historical being. We are not talking about some concocted story, some, some myth which is not real. No, we are talking about a real being, real person called Jesus Christ, who was historically. You know, you can prove his historicity. So he was uh, an historical person, number one. Number two. He was always there as eternal being. Now, if you look at the Bible, we are going to study from the Bible. And therefore, if you look at the Bible, you will understand that Jesus Christ was uh, not only an historical person, but he was also an eternal person. Eternal means that he did not have the beginning. He does not, he did not have the middle point and he will not have the end point. Then the one who exists always endlessly backwards and forwards. There was never a time he was not there. He was always there. In fact, eternity is a quality of God. And only God can be eternal. No one, no one else can be eternal. My friends, Jesus Christ was an eternal person, the Bible says very clearly. If you look at uh, uh, the uh, prophecies about the birth of Jesus Christ, found in Isaiah and also uh, in um, Micah, you will find out very clearly that he was eternal God. For example, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 it says you know talking about here his uh, you know uh, qualities the writer says that he was eternal father he was eternal father meaning the father of eternity simply put he was eternal person he was always there there was there was nothing before him. There will be nothing after him. He was timeless. And only God can be timeless. Or beyond the time. In fact, he created time. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, also in Micah chapter Two, uh, chapter 5, verse 2, Micah chapter 5, and verse 2 says, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel. How do you know that it applies to Jesus Christ? Matthew takes this verse. And applies it to Jesus Christ in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 5. It says, one who used to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. I looked up the Hebrew uh, meaning of this particular phrase. In fact, many Hebrew scholars say that Hebrew language cannot speak better than this. They cannot use a better statement than this to talk about the eternity of that person. Jesus Christ was eternal being. Coming to the New Testament, there are several references, but you know, for the, for uh, because we do not have enough time, we will look at one more references for the eternality of Christ. One day Jesus said to his opponents, before Abraham was, I am, he said. In John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 58. In fact, uh, it is uh, 
grammatically incorrect statement because when you use a, a past uh, you know past verb you you must uh, also use appropriate language there it says before abraham was jesus christ should have said i was and it still meant he was pre-existent meaning that he existed before his birth in bethlehem 2000 years ago he came and he was born as a human being into this world but he existed before that but jesus wanted to go further than that and he said before abraham was i am meaning i am eternally existing one dear friends this is the kind of jesus christ that is portrayed in the scriptures the bible he was an eternal god eternal being and number 3 he was virgin born 700 years before he was born it was prophesied about him that a, a virgin shall conceive and be with a child and who is this child this is jesus christ if you look at matthew's gospel you will understand very clearly chapter 1 Matthew quotes that verse and applies it to Jesus Christ. And if you want to look at the doctor's report about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ you will have to simply read Luke's account because Luke was a doctor, a physician. And he very carefully presents the case very carefully that Jesus Christ was not born to both male and female parents he was born supernaturally miraculously only to a mother he had only a mother and he did not have any father it was a miracle miracles are possible miracles are possible If you believe in God it entails the idea of miracles and Jesus Christ was born to a virgin he was born sinlessly number 4 he was a man who got it right he was sinless he was born sinless and he lived the sinless life he never committed any sin in all of his life never never absolutely never committed any sin in his life in fact his enemies admitted it that he was not a sinner in luke chapter 19 verse 7 you know people murmured against jesus saying he has gone to be the guest of a sinner luke chapter 15 verse 2 this man welcomes sinners in fact uh, he was pronounced innocent even before just a few final hours before his death by pontius pilate and also pilate's wife said he uh, don't have anything to do with the with this with this righteous man for i suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him matthew's gospel chapter 27 verse 19 in fact the one who betrayed the lord jesus christ to his enemies judas iscariot the one of the disciples of jesus christ he was the one who betrayed him and he said i have sinned for i have betrayed innocent blood matthew's gospel chapter 27 verse 3 and 4 in fact uh, when jesus christ was crucified on the cross two criminals were also crucified on either either side of him one to the left and the other to the right and one of them said don't you fear god talking to his own friend 
who was also crucified, don't you fear God since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. In fact, uh, there is a statement by the Roman army officer in charge of the execution uh, squad. And uh, this is what he said. He said, surely this was a righteous man. Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verse 44. Righteous here means not simply good, but it means upright in the sight of God. His followers believed that he was sinless. Saul, who became Paul later on, who, who was called Paul later on, you know, he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, who had no sin, Jesus Christ had no sin. That's what he said. That's what he said. The writer of the Hebrews said, he said, Jesus Christ was without sin. Hebrews gospel, Hebrews uh, epistle to the Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. And he was holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, so on and so forth. In fact, the uh, the inner circle of Jesus Christ, if you go and ask them, because they, they lived very close to him. What others could not know about him, they could know about him. And if you go to one of them, one of them uh, in fact, the leader of the band, Peter, he said he was without blemish or defect. First Peter chapter 1, verse 19. And in chapter 2, verse 22, the same person, Peter, says that Jesus committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. There was a great uh, uh, Puritan author by the name of Thomas Manton. You know, he said once like this, he says... Um, most of man's sins are in his words. Most of man's sins are in his words. We fall in our words, in our speech, in our language. But Peter said, very clearly, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. What about uh, the friend who was very, very close to Jesus Christ. John the Elder, he was called late, uh, later on John the Elder. He said, it is uh, said about him that he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. And he was with Jesus Christ. He saw Jesus Christ. He lived with Jesus Christ for more than three years. And he said that Jesus Christ was a righteous person. First John 2.29. Upright person in God's uh, sight. Meaning, you know, in him is no sin. There is no sin in him. But, you know, if you look at the greatest people in the history of the church, they never claimed that they were sinless. Or others did not claim that these people were sinless. For example, there was a great uh, theologian and a great philosopher by the name of Augustine in the 5th century. And in his famous book, The Confessions, he says at one point, he says like this, I will now call to my mind my past fullness and the carnal corruptions of my soul. About 400 years uh, back, there was a great man by the name of John Calvin. Before, Just before, a few days before his death, he wrote, all I have done has been worth nothing. 
I am a miserable creature. My voices have always displeased me. These people are not bad people. They did great things for the Lord. They lived great lives, but you know, they know that in the heart of hearts, there was a sin in them. Thinking about John Wesley, whose preaching on holiness changed the face of England. In fact, uh, one historian uh, ranked him as the greatest force of the 18th century. The greatest force of the 18th century, John Wesley. But on his deathbed, this is what he said about himself. I, the chief of sinners, am. I, the chief of sinners, am. His friend, John Wesley's friend, by the name of George Whitfield, has been called the greatest preacher that England has ever produced. But he saw himself as a guilty, weak, and helpless worm. And we started uh, today's uh, sermon uh, with Jonathan Edwards, Jonathan Edwards, Edwards' words. And he was possibly the finest theologian and philosopher uh, America has ever known and was uh, once described as one of the most holy he was described as one of the most holy, humble, and heavenly-minded men the world has seen since the apostolic age. Since the apostolic age, no one lived like this man. He was the most holy, the humble, the heavenly-minded man. But yet, once he wrote about himself like this, when I look into my heart and take a view of my wickedness, it looks like an abyss infinitely deeper than hell. I can go on and on giving you so many uh, uh, history, uh, so many stories like this. But I think let me stop it here. Let me say very clearly. But Jesus Christ, if you look at the picture of Jesus Christ mentally, you will understand. That he was absolutely sinless person. He always did. Always did. What pleased God the father. You know. It doesn't say sometimes. It doesn't say. In some things. But in everything. And at all times. He always pleased. God in everything. In fact, he said, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 4. In fact, God himself very clearly stated that Jesus Christ was very pleasing to God the Father. Two times at the time of his baptism, and at the time of his transfiguration, uh, the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But God says about the all other people in the world, it says in Genesis chapter 6 verse 12, God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. All the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. Psalm 53 verse 3 says everyone has turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says for there is no difference for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. My friend. Jesus Christ. Was. Holy. A holy person. A holy person. Jesus Christ was an historical person. Jesus Christ. Was eternal person. Or is eternal person. And he is a virgin born. 
he was a virgin born and then he was pure and holy then number 5 he died and rose again many people die but his death was death we are going to talk about that tomorrow but for today i just would like to say very clearly because there are people who think and who in fact who have it written in their books in their books clearly that jesus didn't die the bible says very clearly he died and he rose again on the third day if you don't believe this you're not believing the real jesus of the bible if you do not have this perspective about him you have a jesus of your own imagination not the jesus of the bible but jesus of your own imagination he died he was um he came to this world to die in fact he died and he rose again let me just give you a few uh clear reasons that clearly proves that he died very clear new testament clearly testifies that jesus really died and that his corpse his dead body was placed in a tomb there are many references matthew 27 50 57 to 66 acts chapter 13 28 to 29 and so on and so forth first corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 and 4 jesus christ really died and that his corpse was placed in a tomb and then john's gospel is more emphatic in this in fact uh, john's gospel chapter 19 31 to 34 says that a spear was thrust in his body and mark chapter 15 verse 44 says peel the pilot who got jesus christ killed he was very careful about the death of christ there was no shadow of doubt in him that jesus died in fact even if you look at outside look at uh, uh, the literature outside of the new testament josephus talked about it tacitus talked about it very clearly that jesus christ died he didn't appear to die he didn't faint he died literally in fact about 30 times in the new testament the phrase from the dead from the dead he is added to the expression god raised jesus or jesus rose indicating that the new testament clearly believed that he had died and then he also rose again very clearly you have uh, several um, evidences for the resurrection of jesus christ in fact uh, let me quote uh, one author by the name of josh mcdowell he says after more than 700 hours of studying this subject the subject of the resurrection of jesus christ this is what he says after more than 700 uh, hours of studying this subject and thoroughly investigating its foundation i have come to the conclusion that the, re- that the resurrection of jesus christ is one of the most wicked vicious heartless hoaxes ever foisted upon the minds of men or it is the mo- the most fantastic fact of history look at the evidence about the empty tomb look at the survival of christianity in spite of so much of persecution hostility look at the transformation of the belief the disciples of jesus christ and several other evidences very very clearly point that jesus christ rose again from the dead in fact this is this is the gospel 
you don't have the gospel without these facts. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's look at that. Chapter 15, verse 1. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, he died for our sake for our sins and he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures this is the gospel jesus christ died and he rose again that's the uh, fifth point and the sixth point is he was more than a man in fact, he was God. He was more than a man. He was God, the Bible says. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says that he was mighty God. In John's gospel, chapter 1, verse 1, it says in the beginning was the word. Word is Jesus Christ, according to verse 14. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Same gospel, chapter 20, verse 28. Thomas fell at the knees of Jesus Christ and he said, my Lord and my God. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 says, God who purchased the church with his own precious blood. Jesus Christ was the one who gave his blood and he is called God according to that passage. Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 says, who being in the form of God, did not think it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He was God. Colossians 2 verse 10 very clearly says, in him the fullness, all the fullness of God, he had dwelt in him in bodily form. Romans chapter 9 verse 5 talks about that. And Titus chapter three, chapter two verse thirteen talks about it. And lastly, you no, know, there are many ways, but I'm just giving you a few of them. Hebrews chapter one verse eight is very explicit. In fact, the Father Himself is addressing the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, like this: "Thy throne or your throne, O God, is forever and ever." My friend, Jesus Christ is God. As God, he was always there. He was eternal. But he was promised for us that he should come into this world, he should die for people, and he would be buried, and he would rise again, and he would prepare salvation for them. So according to the scriptures, he came about 2,000 years ago. God became man. He was called God-man. Not God in man or God and man, but God hyphen man. He was fully God and fully man. That's it. That itself is a mystery, but that's what the Bible presents. That is the picture of Jesus Christ we have in the Bible. When he came into this world, he came through the means of the virgin birth. And he lived, he, he was born sinless, and he lived sinless life. As a life, he was a righteous person. We're going to look at this um, Tomorrow also a little bit, because that, that's where our salvation comes into play. He was sinless. He was a righteous person. And he died for us, for you and for me. And he rose again on the third day. This is the greatest historically valid evidence that we have for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have so much of it. He was not simply a man. 
a great man, a guru, a prophet, or a king, or somebody great, but he was God himself. God took upon himself the human nature, became God, hyphen man, for your sake and for my sake. Lastly, what do we do with him? Pilate was faced with this same idea. This is what he said. What shall I do with Jesus whom you call Christ? What shall I do with Jesus? Now the same question is given to you, posed at you very clearly. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Please call him. What will you do with this man or with this person called Jesus? Do you have the right idea? Do you believe in the real, genuine Jesus Christ who is explained in the Bible or you have your own idea? If you have wrong ideas, you must change your ideas. And you must follow this truth. You must come into your life. Probably we'll talk about that a little more tomorrow. But for now, Jesus Christ is the greatest person that anybody has heard. There is no greater person than the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father except through me. If you want to go to heaven, Jesus Christ is the only way. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Real Jesus Christ who is explained in the scriptures. We would, we would like to thank you and praise you for giving us clarity on the person of on the identity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us that we may read the scriptures, the Bible, and have proper idea of who Jesus Christ is. He is not simply a faith healer. He is not simply a, one of the prophets, or greatest of all the prophets. He was God, and he is God. And he is the one who gives us eternal life. He is the one who accepts us in heaven. And therefore, Lord, help us that we may trust in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He who has the son has life. Kiss the son. You are saying, Lord, you are commanding all of us, kiss the son, believe in my son, or else I be angry, I will be angry. And may we understand that Jesus Christ is the true God who became man for myself. And may we believe in him as our only God and Savior. Please bless us to that extent. In Jesus' precious name we pray.